Um, the Dan Church's uh, grandson, who is seven, 11. 11, 11, is very observant about cottage signs and came back to his grandpa's house last year and reported that there was another cottage with the name Narnia. And if you look, this, our Narnia is at 418, and this one is at 414. So they're just literally one block apart. And he came back and was very distressed <laughs> that somebody else would name the cottage. And Grandpa tried to have this logical conversation about, well, this is our Narnia, and she could name her cottage. Well, he still was very distressed. So Grandpa offered that they could go talk to the woman <laughs> about her cottage name. And so far, he has decided he's not willing to do that. But maybe you'll have an opportunity to show him some skills around negotiation. <laughs> But here's an 11-year-old, because the Narnia sign is not easy to see. It's in a window. So, um, but he's, he's paying attention. Um, a, a beautiful sign, a wrinkle in time at 184 Lynn, um, based on the 1963 book. Uh, there's a Charlotte's Web cottage on 443 Poplar, uh, named after by Charlotte Lucky, or Lucky using her name in 1975 when they purchased the cottage. Her husband was Lakeside's summer gate manager that during the period of time through the 60s and 70s. Recreation and wellness. I want you to see here's a, another whole range of opportunity for new cottage names. You could use a cottage name that referenced tennis, rope, croquet, horseshoes, swimming, or basketball, because none of those cottage names have been taken. Now maybe with the swimming pool, <coughs> that will open opportunities and people might start uh, using that. But uh, we have very limited recreation referenced uh, cottage names. The Shuffle Inn, um, Bob and Judy Sudemeyer used this name uh, when they uh, identified a cottage name in 2005. Bob is a 17 times men's national shuffleboard champion and was inducted in the National Shuffleboard Hall of Fame. Um, this one was painted by Joel Hagemeyer, and uh, they take very good care of it, take it in in the winter, um, but it is indeed a very unique sign. Um, Bob and Lois Brucken bought their cottage in 1978, and um, Bob tells me it was to reflect their family's interest in sailing and awareness of finding a safe harbor in storm. Is he on by? Oh, yes. Uh, it's not, it's not, oh, Bob, I missed this one. You're 167. Peach. Peach, yes. Thank you for catching that error. Um, and I think a safe harbor reflects not only actual in a sailboat, but in life, too, is knowing where our safe anchors are. But Bob, the lawyer, didn't let me leave his front porch until he let me know that there is an alternative definition that has to do with uh, law, and uh, that something can be deemed not to violate a given statute under certain conditions. It was way more complex than I was wanting to hear about. Uh, but I assure you that, that Bob Brucken can help you understand what Safe Harbor is from a legal standpoint, should you want to know. Um, now, here's a recreation sign with a very unique um, approach. Recreation. Um, spelled W-R-E-C-K. Uh, Ginger uh, Leonard tells me that her husband views renovation of fixer-up cottages as recreation. Uh, they bought this, this one in uh, 2015 and moved in um, just six months later. Their number one recreation was actually at 524 West 6th. Uh, they owned that one for 10 years. Um, here's another one where uh, fixing up a uh, rundown house is viewed as recreation by the husband. Michelle Richards actually said her husband Tom looks as this as his recreation. They bought a fixer-upper in 2003 and did extensive renovations uh, over the past multiple years. And at the time their children were 11 and 13 and they pulled out their scrapbook which showed their two children up on the roof of the shed. 
No, I thought that was very interesting in terms of how one uses your children to help. I actually met their son last night, who's you know now in his late twenties, and I remarked on uh, his his work with his family. He said, "Oh, I'm over that. That was that was okay." <laughs> so he holds no grudges. Um, but Ch Tom chose the name Hubby's Hobby, and Michelle had the sign made using fixtures that actually came out of the cottage while they were doing repair work. And uh, this little birdhouse in the front, it is amazing how much it looks like the house itself. Again, I was down on the ground trying to get a picture of those houses together. Here are just some unique fun cottages, uh, names and signs. The Mayner House, when Bill and Charlotte Mayner bought this uh, cottage, it was called the Redland House. Um, it had been owned and operated as a rental uh, with the Edna Redland living in it for 44 years. They agreed when they bought the house that they would keep the name until her death in 1992. I find that very amazing that someone would make that kind of commitment to uh, a, someone when they were purchasing their cottage. Um, after Edna died and they were selecting their own name, they always had lakeside kids on their porch, and the kids said, well, you might as well just call it the Mayor House, because that's where we tell our parents we're going. We're going to the Mayor House. They won't know it by any other name. So it reflects their love of coffee and um, their community of kids gathering. Now you probably wonder, why does this sign look so pathetic? Um, the name Popcorn Palace was selected by Chris and Jeannie Christopher. Uh, there were a group of uh, five couples who came for um, a weekend retreat at Lakeside, and by the end of that weekend, four of those couples had identified cottages that they wished to buy. This was in the 70s. Prices were uh, pretty low because the grounds looked pretty bad. Um, so Chris and Jeannie Christopher bought this cottage and it got the name Popcorn Palace because they would invite their friends and neighbors in for tomato soup and popcorn suppers every Sunday evening. Now, when they left and the next owners came in, they weren't interested in this name and they threw the sign out. The neighbor across the street took the sign out of the trash and used it to wipe his paint brushes on. <laughs> so, when Sandy Reinhardt uh, purchased the cottage uh, about 1994, the neighbors brought the sign over and said, you know, you, you can have the sign if you want it. So Sandy did the best job he could at cleaning it up, and that's the sign and name for this cottage. Um, Betty and Gerald Lockoff, Betty is in the audience today, she was another one of those couples that was here on that uh, retreat in 1975. And they also identified a cottage that they could purchase. Um, Betty's husband, Gerald, um, was famous for his homemade ice cream. So they named their cottage the Ice Cream Parlor. Uh, the grandson who lives in Austin, Texas, still has the wooden ice cream bucket. And there are occasional guests every summer, Betty tells me, who walk down the street, their visitors to Lakeside, will come knock on her door and say, do you really serve ice cream here? <laughs> Betty ke keeps ice cream in her freezer, and two or three times a summer, she serves ice cream. And that's part of her offering hospitality in Lakeside. This is actually the second sign, but she uh, had the original one and took it to uh, sign painters who recreated it, uh, and uh, it is indeed a charming, charming sign. One scoop at a time. I forgot to check with Brett and Heidi when they purchased their cottage. This is um, the Bankins cottage, the owners of uh, the patio. Uh, no question about where one scoop at a time came from. This one is up on the porch. It, it is very hard to see, so you have to get permission to enter. Uh, this is a fun one, lighthouse keeping. Reverend Bill McCarthy, uh, who was a superintendent, and um, Methodist Bishop Reverend Judy Craig were co-owners of this cottage uh, for a period of 24 years, and this commuted their, communicated their sense of humor. Lighthouse keeping can be interpreted either of two ways, um, and uh, that's the way they wanted it. 
The current owners um, purchased it, uh, again, Methodist minister. They've decided to keep the name, um, and uh, the sign is still there. The primary cottage, uh, named in 2005 for three reasons. See if you can get them all. Primary colors. She's a primary teacher. She was a primary school teacher and administrator. The third one's a little harder. She said, it's our only cottage. We don't have another one. So it's the primary cottage. <laughs> Everything inside is red, yellow, and blue. Tables, doors, furniture, upholstery, kitchen cabinets, counters, everything. Red, yellow, and blue. The Whalen, to play on Dennis and Nancy's last name, the Whalen. They were debating two names, and their son got uh, tired of them not coming up with one, so he settled it by ordering this sign for them. And it was first used on their cottage at 402 Oak that had 900 square feet back in about 1990, Nancy said. They're now settled at their uh, newer cottage uh, at 556 Poplar. So Dennis had the uh, baby whale made um, to add to the first one because this one definitely has more room, more bedrooms, and they could end up living here full time. So. Gretchen? Yes. Dennis? May I offer this? That we've had people stop by and ask if we had rooms available. <laughs> <laughs> just, just like the lady with the ice cream? Yeah. Yes. 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 So again, if you're thinking about a new name for your cottage or a name, uh, consider what you choose because you could have strangers come to your door. <laughs> well, this is the last one I'm going to tell you about. Uh, I have to stop and think. Towel Vaughn. Towel Vaughn. It's you don't pronounce the F. It becomes a V. Um, the first owner of this house, which we all know as Doris Bright's house, um, named it Quercus, which was Latin for oak. They had a huge oak in the backyard. Um, then Eda, uh, Doris Bright's uh, aunt, maiden aunt, and her mother uh, uh, purchased the house, and they kept the name Quercus even though the large oak tree in the yard had been cut down because it had rotted out. Doris changed the name when she became the owner in 1968 to reflect her Welsh family roots. And her family is actually buried in this little cemetery in Gomer. And it was when um, she went to the cemetery that she saw the name Tualfan and uh, selected it for her cottage. Now, how do we know this? It's because in Doris Bright's own handwriting, we have this explanation of the cottage name. The Quercus, the first name, uh, how you pronounce Tuelvan, and why she changed the name. This is what I'd like to have in every single cottage file. Is something written in the hand of the current owner that says, this is how our cottage got its name. It's such a rich piece of, uh, of history for any cottage. Um, so I invite those of you who haven't named your cottage uh, to do so and to tell us, all of you, why your cottage is named what it is. In case you wanted to know, the LPO directory identifies 450 cottages with names and 620 without. Cottages were, names were first printed in 2002. That's only 14 years ago, which is very surprising. Names range from the sacred to the silly, but they all add character to Lakeside. So, enjoy this special week ahead. Thank you for coming this afternoon. There's still lots more cottage names uh, uh, to be explored, to be given, to be identified. And we have 200 photographs of cottage names on the tables up here, taken by Linda Luffingwell. I got it right? Luffingwell. Linda, stand up. Linda decided in 2015 when she retired that she needed a project. So her project has been to take names.
I didn't find this out until yesterday at the swimming pool dedication. And I said, why don't you bring them over and put them out on the table? She said, well, they're in Sylvania. Or she said, well, they're at home. I didn't know where home was. And I said, oh, that's too bad. So I got an email last night. Well, we zipped home to Sylvania yesterday, got the photos, and brought them back. So our thanks to Linda for bringing those.